what is going on guys so today inside of this video we're going to be going through how you can get out of the google sandbox okay so i haven't yet actually finished that on that screen there where you can see um, how long it took me but i'm going to be going through exactly how long it did and give you all of the methods um, of how you can actually get out of google sandbox yourself okay so just to give you a bit of clarity you might be thinking exactly what Google Sandbox is, okay? So I don't know if it's really real, like honestly, but it's something that definitely does take effect when you're trying to build a site. So I'm just gonna go through a brief explanation of exactly what I found it to be. And I found this really cool answer on a website called medium.com. And uh, they've basically got a really good explanation of exactly you know what Google Sandbox is and just summing it up. So it's basically a, a filter that Google puts on new websites to prevent them from ranking very well in the first two to 12 months or so. While Google doesn't directly admit to the policy's existence, SEOs like ourselves see it in practice and are the ones that came up with the name for it. So the reason why it was given the name Sandbox is because it's very similar to, you know, when you have a child and you only allow them to play in the sandbox. And then as they grow, you allow them to, you know, go out into the open world. So that's where the analogy comes from. OK, so then the next following section is why does the sandbox exist? So in the earlier days of SEO, it was much easier to spam Google. So you could simply set up a website and as long as it had proper keyword research optimized, you could build links to it and rank it almost overnight. So this is something that I was seeing like, you know, a long time ago with different SEOs. And I wasn't in the game at that point, but just coming in, you know, in the newest the, the days, I can see that obviously, you know, people were ranking sites. Like when I go and do my research and things, I could see people ranking sites overnight, literally. So it's a lot different than that, you know, these days now. Um, I'm not sure if people are still doing that. I highly doubt it because, you know, it takes at least like a month or so. Even some of the experts in the field, you know, take months to actually get their first rankings and whatever else. And when we're talking about rankings, we're not talking about position one. We're actually talking about showing up in the first top 100 results. OK, which is called the uh, search engine results pages, which is SERP. Yeah, that's what we call it. OK, so as you can imagine, there were many different affiliates and black hat SEOs that took advantage of this by creating tons of spammy websites. The sandbox was created to defend Google against these spammy tactics. OK, so that's what Google Sandbox is. And that's the reason why it's about. OK, so in the following section, I'm going to be talking about now exactly, you know, what the backstory of this website is so the website is a niche website so i won't be revealing that site it's very new um as with always though i will re reveal the site in, in in the coming you know months once it's built up enough strength and whatever else but the domain was registered on the 11th of march 2019 okay so we're currently on this 16th of may okay so that was only two months ago now the first article was published on the 23rd of april 2019 so that was only last month that's less than a month ago only eight articles on um in total are on the site and all published okay so the earliest pu uh, published article i think i did was around four days ago so over the last you know one month or less than a month because it hasn't yet even reached a month yet um i've been publishing articles so i've probably you know i've done like two in a couple of days then left it a couple of days then done another one and whatever else so this it's just been spread out over the period of around three weeks okay and then you've got um there's no backlinks and uh, there's no off-page seo you know that i've done so off-page seo is things like building backlinks and you know essentially building backlinks <laughs> i haven't done anything like that okay so i haven't done anything on any other websites or you know built social media links back or anything social links sorry or you know guest post or anything forums nothing okay so what exactly did i do so that's what i'm going to go through inside of this okay so the first thing i done was register my domain on search console now there's two different ways you can actually do this these days you can actually register the domain or you can register an individual uh you know url so you can register your http and semicolon forward slash forward slash your website dot com whatever it is or you could register the domain now what, when you register the domain it doesn't matter whether your website's http or https which is obviously whether the website's got an ssl certificate in, installed on the site it doesn't matter what you do to the site 
it will all come under that one roof okay so that one umbrella everything will just locate so i recommend highly that if you are registering a brand new website with search console um then you register it with as your domain okay so if any of you are wondering what search console is you can see videos tons of them on youtube there's tons of videos on exactly what it is it's just essentially google's back-end platform where you can register a website so you become you know um seen on on the search engine results pages okay um set up social media accounts okay so <clears throat> What I did is I set up some social media accounts, YouTube, Insta, Pinterest, Tumblr, all of that, and um, just basically set them up, you know, just so Google knows that my site exists and the brand is, is starting, something's emerging, okay, out of the rubble. And what you want to do is basically, you know, have those all registered uh, with the same name as the, the author from the website, okay? So you want to keep it all very, you know, similar. Okay, now long form content, I focused on the keywords, I never inserted here, but the keywords were easy to medium. So I classify easy to medium um, under 30 on the key search tool. So if you want to know more about the key search tool, you can check that out in some of my other videos. I'll link to that below this video. But um, that gives me my keywords and these were um, easy to medium keywords with relatively good search. So around two to 4,000 searches per month. And then I also sprinkled some LSI keywords in there, which stands for latent sem semantic index keywords. So that's essentially just relative related keywords that are um, good for helping Google to understand what your article is about or any other search engines at that. OK, uh, good on page SEO. So I've actually left a link to Brian Dean's backlink template. Sorry, backlink <laughs> Brian Dean's on page SEO template on backlinko.com. OK, you can go check that out. It's a really good article. It's the one that I go by and I use it as a guideline. Now, it doesn't mean do it exactly to the T, but it's something that you want to use as a guideline, like how to position your H1, H2 tags, um, your titles in that sense, how to, you know, um, do your out <laughs> outbound links, internal links, how much media you should have, the type of amount of content you should have. I usually go for around 2000 words or more. OK, but that all depends on what type of keyword I'm trying to rank for um, and also the competition as well, what the competitors are doing. OK, so I set up Jetpack, the plugin with the auto share feature. So you can actually head over to WordPress.com and you can set up an auto share feature on your site. So if you register your sharing websites uh, on there, I think it gives you like Tumblr, uh, Facebook, and one other that I used, it has LinkedIn and it has another one. But essentially all I've done was set them up. So every time I do a new post, it actually auto shares. So I haven't actively built any backlinks or anything like that. But obviously, if you want to classify that as a backlink, then that's actually, you know, sharing it to the social media account. So every time that I post, it actually automatically shares them. OK, now I post, um, I posted eight pieces of uh, content, so not 10 okay with a good on-page seo so i already wrote that i don't know why i wrote it again um about me okay so what i actually built the site like is i had my content but i've also got an about me uh, page a privacy policy or privacy policy and a contact page so those are the three uh, pages that i add on to any site even if you're building web 2.0s you also want to add those pages onto them to really give it a real legitimate feel. And also search engines are paying attention to that. This does come into ranking factors. OK, you want to force index each individual page. So with the power of the search console from Google, after you've actually registered your domain and verified it with them, um, that now obviously shows gives you the potential to show up in the results. So like in the top 100. So you now can become, you know, um, visual or you can show up in that sense okay so anyway when you've done that what i then personally do is each article that i then post afterwards i force index so if you go back to the tool you can actually just put the url into the top of the uh, account in the back end of the search console and then you can ask it to crawl the the page the link and what it will do is basically it will force the search engine to crawl the link and then obviously you might see it start popping up in the top 100. Yeah. When you've actually got like an established website, 
that can be as quick as in a couple of hours okay now a mobile responsive design that was another thing that i used so that's based on the theme i'm currently using the theme genesis so that's a really good uh, theme and then the child theme that i'm using is the genesis template there's many different ones that you can use but um yeah that was that one was really good that's one that i'm using and then a fast site so i'm using the uh plugins fastest cache and also auto optimize if that's how you pronounce it um, i'm using those two plugins in conjunction with each other and then i've also got smush which is used to actually you know press down all of your images and compress them so they're nice and uh, easy for search engines uh, sorry to increase your page speed okay and your loading time so you want to ideally use tools like gtmetrics.com or pingdom.com or Google's uh, speed tests website and you want to ideally be loading your pages in under three seconds now if you've got a massive article that might not be the case and you know you might not be able to get it under three seconds if you can't you can't but there's many different tactics and techniques you can use to get your page speed up I'm not an expert on that that's something I'm currently testing out at the moment um, but I'll be sharing everything and all of the feedback of how that goes for me over the next couple of uh, videos and then siloing so what siloing is basically building up like a good web of relevancy to help google understand your website or any other search engine so i've used the term seo clusters down there that's something i've labeled a, a certain type of strategy myself and what i essentially do is basically interlink amongst one category of articles and do not link out into the other so it's essentially you know a silo uh, structure but I don't link out of that. So I have like it in a kind of cluster. So you've got all these kind of uh, pages just linking into each other and that's it. And when I do it, I only link like one time from each one. So if I link from one to number two, then I only link one time from two to three. You know, that's how I do it. You can probably do it more times than that, but I just done it once. That's how I've did it. Okay, and then three weeks in waiting time. And that's that's exactly how I've technically done this. So that's exactly how I've done it over the last, you know, three weeks. So that's really fast to get out of Google Sandbox. I have obviously built one site already. So I do think that's kind of helped me because I'm really a lot better with writing content. You know, I've written a lot of content now. And the way I can structure it, the way I do my keyword density, so how many times I put the keyword into the article, all of those different things I've kind of developed over time. Now, if you have any questions about getting out of the Google Sandbox, then make sure to leave a comment in the section below, in the comment section. And also leave a like on the video if you did like the video and make sure to subscribe if you like this type of content. I'll be pushing out more videos just like this over the next couple of weeks. Apologies for the wait because it's been about a week since my last one, but I'll be pushing out another one in just a couple of days. So make sure you stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.